What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and uh, I'd like to talk about this technology. It's called Vulcan. I'm going to see it on the screen right now. And uh, I've been fascinated by this technology just because how simple and how it builds on top of the REST API limitations. And uh, we're going to talk about what it does exactly. And uh, I'll talk about whether it's worth to kind of switch to this technology versus GraphQL or just plain good old REST API. Uh, I haven't tried it myself. I just read the, the spec and I read the doc. And uh, I got to say, it's amazing. I loved how the creators of this technology built on top of what is missing on top of REST API. So, guys, what is the problem with plain good old REST? REST is, uh, stands for Representational Stand Transfer, and I made a video about REST and its limitation, and a good thing about it, check it out right here. But REST is a resource-based uh, framework. They don't like to use that framework. It's an architectural style. That's the fancy word for it. But everything is a resource. And when you want to access, so you have to architecture in a resource space. So if you have a bunch of users, you do slash users. And then if you want to access one user, you do slash one, for example, by ID or slash the name of the user. Right. So if you want to access, uh, for example, the comments that the user made, you do slash users slash three, the user ID, slash comments, and so on. Everything is a resource. And if you want to access particular comments, slash user, slash three, slash comments, slash seven, right? You get the idea. So that's, that's, it's always resource-based. So that, and that's its advantage and disadvantage at the same time. Resources, because if you're, if you have like a nice architecture user interface uh, and experience, that's fine. However, it doesn't really scale because you'll end up, especially for Facebook, that's Facebook uh, problem. And that's why we moved from REST API to GraphQL. Is it? We have, we end up, get help with the same problem, right? We end up making a lot of calls to build up what we want in the user experience. And that's, that's a long discussion that I can't probably fit in a quick video because I have to go home right now and have dinner. But, it's just, when, when do you build stuff first? You build an API first versus the, uh, the user experience or the user experience versus the REST API. And based on that, how, how, how coherent your teams are, right? Because everything really makes sense when exactly you start. And based on that, you, you, you kind of build the whole architecture and software. But this is the limitation of the REST API. So what Volcan did, right before we move to Vulcan, graphql solved this problem by having a query language on top of the back end and the client basically ask any other question says hey i want the user and the first comment but also the most liked comment and whatever right so you can Essentially, it's, a, it's the SQL of the web, I'd like to call it. That's the graph, GraphQL. So this way, not only the, another problem with the resource, the REST API is, if you ask for the user slash one, you get, you get everything. You get all the properties. There is no standard way to get, hey, I'm only with the username and the name, and I don't want really the email and, and, and the other parameters, right? Because every piece of metadata you ask is a hit is the head to the database is the head to to the cache it, it it is a cost it's a network hop it's a it's a it's a call jump from the database index to the actual row to pull something from the desk right that is not indexed so it's it's expensive right despite this could be solved very easily by doing some query parameters. Hey, I want this information, right? It's not really REST spec. That's what people complain about. So GraphQL solved this for all these problems. It came with all its own problems, which I talked about right here. 
GraphQL problems. GraphQL course, check it out, right? Just talking about the whole thing. What Volcane did is pretty neat. They didn't just say, nah, I hate rest. It's just like with the NoSQL people, right? Relational database, nah, doesn't scale, hate it. NoSQL is the way to go. Sometimes, yeah, right? Oh, I hate schema. I don't like schema. Blah, blah. Moving, no SQL. Just, 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 just write everything from scratch. So this, this is another way, right? This is you. Get, you see the pattern, right? So, relational. Move to the NoSQL immediately. Right? We will not trying to solve this. We'll just rebuild the whole thing to solve the different, different problem. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. It's just, it's just sometimes. Do we really? Do we? Do we need to build the whole thing just to solve a small problem? So with GraphQL, uh, with the rest and GraphQL is the same exact thing. We build a whole brand new thing just to solve a little bitty, teeny, teeny, teeny problem with rest, right? You can see I love rest, right? <laughs> I just don't like over engineering. Let's say that I love GraphQL. I love the engineering behind GraphQL. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's just I feel sometimes we over engineer things just to solve a tiny bitty teeny 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 mini mo problem. But Volcane, yes, I keep coming to Volcane. What does Volcane do to the REST API to solve this problem? It uses the beautiful HTTP2. And I guess we weren't lucky enough that HTTP2 lined up with REST and Volcane didn't come earlier to solve this problem. But what Golkane does is says, hey, you can make a request to a relation or to a resource and in the headers, ask for what you want, more stuff. So you want the user and you want their comments and you want the most liked, I don't know, comment, tell me in the headers. And when you make that get request through HTTP2, there's a beautiful thing in HTTP2 called HTTP2 push, where we're going to use the same stream in HTTP2 to push content back to you as a client without you requesting it. Well, technically, in this case, you did request it, but it is, it is a different way, right? It's a, so you make a request and you just, in that request, you get what you ask for, you get also more stuff. So it's, it's a different pattern, but it's a feature in HTTP2. It has its own limitation on HTTP2. I talked about that with HTTP2 push. Check that video out. But I loved it. I love how the team just built on top of this beautiful feature in HTTP2 as a requirement and then solved the limitation of REST API. So people who love REST API and, and suffering from that limitation, they can use the Volcane. And... Uh, I don't know if it comes with some limitation. I need to research more and make another video actually showing the tech. But I love it. I love just the, the, the beauty of the simplicity of things. I love simple. I'm a simple, I'm fundamentals. I'm all about the basics in this channel. I love basic, simple stuff. And Volcane rocks. Get it? I love it. <laughs> I just made it up. Literally this second. I just wish that Volcane really HTTP2 just came in lined up with rest with the with the ball with the with the birth of a rest and, and then someone came up with this idea earlier I think if that was the case I don't think GraphQL will, will be born I might be wrong obviously as in other any other video what do you guys think do you think this technology is good do you think it's just awful you prefer GraphQL or do you prefer, prefer other type of technology like gRPC is the future or not? Let me know in all these uh, uh, discussions in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.